And good evening. It's February 27th, 2024. Mm. We're in our next collection of discussions on the Outside the Class series. It's another series from Tim Mackey. It's called Eat This Book. It's just because it sounded fascinating to me from the start. On the dustybeat.com, in the Outside the Class section, we have the Eat This Book source video section set up for review. Because the purpose of Outside the Class is for you to listen to the in-class lecture first. They would be found in the source video playlist. Because with this way of doing things, you can watch the video before we begin chatting. We still hope to keep these around 15 to 20 minutes or so because we want to make them easy to catch and easier to catch up on. So we'll continue our Eat This Book series with The Call to Sacrifice. And this is our final part, part three of three on Outside the Class on the Dusty Feet. And before we forget, if you find these kinds of podcasts useful, you click the subscribe button. The reminders, they just help you. But also, if you think these might be useful to others, that's when you click that like button, because that is the way that YouTube chooses to share these to more people, if they wish. So eat this book, The Call to Sacrifice, Part 3, our final part. The Bible is building a view of human choices, of human sin, of human consequences, and the costs that those choices bring upon humanity and creation. And innocents are involved. He, we today, right, we're in a, we're in a very different cultural context. In the world, like us, it tends to think that we can say and do anything, that we are free to do anything, that there are no real consequences. Yes, the obvious is dealt with. The, the crimes that each culture will choose to be dealt with with its own legal systems. Yet there's so many more violations of humanity and nature that have no earthly consequence. They seem to escape the judgment. Do they really? I guess that's a, a thought that we will most likely eventually have to wrestle and deal with. Yeah? But in this context, this is how it was dealt with. And even, we're going to get to this, we address the missed consequences as well. It, but most weren't expecting that. But as for us, personally and generally, we need to downplay our sin. We downplay our transgressions. We downplay our behavior. Because we see no cost. We get away. We think anyways. We, we get away with so much. It costs us nothing. But here, in this story, we're reading about in the Torah, this scroll of Leviticus, we're very much introduced to cost, and we see the picture. And it makes us very uncomfortable. You know, Tim mentions a point that's, that's even larger than it appears. And in his context, it's still pretty big. Forgiveness has a cost. You know, it's always had a cost. It's not free. It's never been free. You know, we want to have a just God, and we want to have a merciful God. Like I've said many times before, we just don't want the whole God to deal with us. We want the just God to deal with others. We want the merciful God to deal with us. So we only want half, really. That Tim gives us a great little simpler picture to digest, kind of like the analogy. You're at the meal, and you offer to pay the entire barrel. You will cover it. You will pay the debt. And your friend will say, thanks. Appreciate that. That's when you realize that you don't have your wallet. You can't pay the check. You can't cover the debt, yours or theirs. You apologize to your friend when you realize this, and they forgive you for not being able to pay the bill. Then you turn to your server and say that you're sorry that you can't pay the bill. You can't cover the debt. I agree you're being sincere. Yet the server is looking to say to you, well, it was nice of you to offer, and your friend is appreciative, but there's still a debt to be paid. There's still a cost. You know, this is a problem even in this 
simple little example. It's not overlooked. The register is going to be off. The till is going to be short. The just balance will be off. The just part needs to happen is that the debt's paid. We, we can all agree that if we own the business, we'd expect the same. Now, that sounds simple and easy, and you could say, well, the owner should just f forgive the debt, that it would work for you. It, but the debt still reaches. It reaches to the lost food inventory, to the server who, obviously, will not see any service gratuity. The pay to the kitchen staff is affected. It's not free forgiveness. Now, imagine that happening with hundreds of thousands of people in your land, the, the land that you're given and inhabiting. Those poor choices, they add up. That's a lot of trash that needs to be cleaned up, needs to be accounted for, those ledgers rectified. So what's that look like? You can just look outside our doors, down the street, in our towns. One of the interesting parts of Torah was to remind us of this, right? That's what it's supposed to remind. So it would, so hopefully this would be limited, that it would be less of an impact, not only individually, but communally. You know, we were given the instructions for just this purpose, to remind us as often as needed to be reminded that there's a cost and the trash it needs to be dealt with well before it piles up. You know, these instructions, these sacrifices, they'll help deal with the pain, the tragedy, the broken relationships. But when we don't deal with the trash, well, I think we're living that very issue today because we choose not to do this. Remember, I said that I was changing my verbiage, my paradigm perspective. It's not them. It's us. Because it's not really hard at all, to hear us say anyways, that we would balk at the same, right? Because the mirror is the brutal honesty. I agree with Tim very much here that we see only one poor or bad decision. God sees all of them, all billion of them. And I think that we really believe that our decisions are only ours, that we have no other real effects there. They're just for us. They just affect us. I think in reality, it's a very selfish and myopic view but is one still very typical of us? Because it's our choice. We have a choice. Maybe a possible shift could be this is part of our choices. I wonder where that would take us if we admitted that this choice is part of a community. You know, even if this set of rituals and traditions are part of a biblical culture long ago, and the, and the circumstances needed to be to accomplish these, they're no longer in place, does it really change the need? You know, because it's the act before all of this that's, that it's needed, right, is the choices to ourselves and the community that need to be addressed. I think that's a real challenge. We are so busy trying to figure out what things that we think we don't need to do, and really deeper, I think, don't want to do, and we're looking for ways around. And yes, again, the, the structure, it's not in place, but that's not the real concern. The reason for it, and it has not changed, should be our concern. How do we live this so this isn't needed, Right? I know it's not a full reality, and yet do we abandon the effort and then even try to live life differently? I think it might depend on one's other churchy paradigms. How does that how does those how do those paradigms affect our, our lives and our choices? You know, Tim does remind us that the ritual it does hold a promise that the animal it takes the hit. It's the one that, at least symbolically, takes the hit, pays the price. 
get the animal. It's a stand-in because it's our actions that cause the innocent, blemish-free creature of creation to lose its life. I think, I think there's also another point to consider as well. This is not a one-off. This is not a one-and-done. This is as often as it's needed. Dave Atonement was once a year. This is designed for us to remember, to see, to appreciate the cost. I just think we've lost that in so many ways. Tim did say something that caught me. It caused me to think that, that we would think that these sacrifices would solve the problem. And they don't. I agree. But then again, are they supposed to? Was the sacrifice supposed to solve the problem? Is that the purpose of the sacrifice, to solve it? Think about that. Is the sacrifice supposed to solve it? Was it ever meant to? Because the sacrifices, they did go on for centuries. Yet the sacrifices are not the problem. They never were. It's us. Hence, we get the call of the prophets later on in the story, right? And they cry out to the people that, that your sacrifices, they don't mean anything. They are of no use. If your hearts are not there and they're not right, you're just going through the motions. The sacrifices, they're for us to change, for us to realize the cost. They do not fix things. It's the opposite, really. The only cause, more death to the innocent. Remember, I, I like to wear other sandals, right? So this is us making these sacrifices and these choices. It's us that's causing this. These are our choices. Okay, I do hear some kickback. Since they're gone, the sacrifices, then we're free from all of that, yeah? Are we really? Think about this. It's going to get messy and challenging. But how did this really affect us today, right now? Let's add a bit of context, maybe, that I think Tim missed. I'm not sure if it's unintentional. I think it is. It's just missed. These sacrifices, and there are many more than just atonement, right? That one day, that Feast of Atonement in Kippur, that's the one we're talking about. But that's but one. Because I think, I think if we skip through the book of Leviticus, we just kind of ignore it, that we're going to miss the lessons taught. That we're only addressing one lesson with this, this one sacrifice of atonement at one mint. Yes, it is important. It's still only one. And our life and our relationships, our lifetime, we're probably going to need to address a little bit more than that. You know, Jesus addressed the symbology of the ritualistic and ceremonial parts of the sacrifice. So yes, it paid the ransom, the redemption, that bill that was due, the one that we could never repay. And the purpose of the Feast of Atonement, that day of Yom Kippur, every year, is to remind us, as it always should, of that cost. Does our life change? Does our, do our actions change? Do our choices change? Do we really, honestly, truly, with all integrity, embrace and appreciate the depth and the cost of this sacrifice? Like I've said many times about this book, this collection of scrolls we call the Bible, and in those, the life and examples of the Messiah? We like to talk about them. We like to preach about them. I'm just not convinced we like using the lives around as examples. I'm not convinced. Like I've said, we don't want to live like that. We want the freedom. We think that the sacrifice gives us, right? I, I think... I think we're very mistaken on what we that the sacrifice does give us. It's, it's not freedom. It's obligation. It's indebtedness. Because the cost, it's lightly perceived and cursely regarded. 
yet paying the price for the consequence of that second death, the eternal separation from God, not to be seen, not to be regarded by him, to have his back forever turned from us? Maybe now we have a greater framing, maybe, of the filthy rags of those they think they're cleaning up. We abuse that, like those before, and will be long after us. Because I still wrong my neighbor in so many ways, real ways, visceral ways, tangible ways, those other sacrifices, those other offerings that are mentioned in Leviticus. They're taught to us for a reason. They help us remember to take accountability, to be prepared to pay restitution, to honor and love our neighbors as ourselves. I've heard those words before. I noticed in the ending points that Tim brought up that he mentions Mark 10.45. I want to see that verse in context, maybe a, a bit more fuller, right? So let's start with 42. It says, Calling them to himself, Jesus said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. But it is not this way among you. But those who ever wish to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you shall be the slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Like I said before, we love to talk about these stories. We love to pick up the parts that work for us. We just don't like to live it. We don't want to live those words. Servant, slave, serve. It's not us. Payment through service. That's upside down for us, really. In the beginning story in Leviticus, we get the sacrifice. We almost always view it from us bringing the sacrifice. We drop it off and we leave. That's how it works. But we seldom, if ever, do we view it from the priest's side, say, the impact on them. Maybe from their service. What a messy, ugly service job. What a challenging task. What would the impact be on us? Now, if you can picture that, the, the messy service, the dealing with people's garbage, as Tim brought up, and then the sacrifice of innocence, the loss of life. Now, peeking a bit ahead, uh, most of us are here in the here and now in this story. They're looking forward. For us, it's looking back. But we've seen but a glimpse of the roles, the roles of a sacrifice, the roles of a priest. And then we realize that we are called to be, in the texts of Jesus and post-Jesus, that we are called to be both a, a sacrifice, to present ourselves as a sacrifice, to be priests, to serve others as priests. I'll say one last time for today. We love to read about it. We enjoy talking about it. I'm just not convinced we're really ready to live like Jesus. To do what he asks of us. Hopefully, these three episodes on the call to service, they presented a different way to look at things, to cause us to maybe, maybe rethink how we might choose to live. Presenting ourselves as a sacrifice, we can't just drop it off and leave it, because we are it. And being the priest to serve others, as we've seen in messy ways, and even in ways that will, that they're going to affect us. And that effect, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging. Service, service can often be, yeah? This, uh, this upside-down revolution that we continue to talk about. Maybe it's more than just 
one prayer and then we just walk away and move on. Maybe it is a bit more. A life with obligation to the one that paid the bill and passing that on to others? I love that idea very much. And now I try. So thanks for with us in this engaging and challenging series so far. We are three videos in with four more to go. The next we're going to tackle in this Eat This Book series is called The Call to Repentance. I suspect it's going to fit nicely with what we've been chatting about so far. So until next week, thanks for being with us tonight on Outside the Class on the Dusty Feet. <laughs>